these are the old junk bearings so I'm not too worried about it but I've got the uh, FK7 cam and I've got rubber bands uh, going through the head bolts on the other side to try to get my connecting rods a little closer to center and so now just have my marker handy and start turning and see where it hits I think I got it. Could probably go a little bit more for extra insurance. Um, <laughs> let's see, how can I get you in here? So you can see my elbows. What we're looking at is the counterweights, the bottoms of the crankshafts. Um, any place that comes close and it does indeed come close so I'm trying to hold the top wrist pins in approximately the same position you will have your thrust on your crankshaft set so that you want to push your uh, crankshaft all the way towards the flywheel and then you know in the beginning you can't do anything so you'll find like just right now Whoop. see how this yeah <laughs> it's close it's close and so you just have to back it up and then put a mark um, it's this is cast you saw me over there in the vise messing around with it just be darn careful you don't drop this because you will it'll break it's brittle it's cast and they will break just dropping them on the floor um, <laughs> never done it but I've seen it done and yeah experiment with an old cam this is the FK7 but you can see where it's close here and this back in the day is where I cut that lobe on that on my other crank <laughs> crank cam see I I kinda overdid it I didn't have the crankshaft pulled back farther but this thing was in there for a couple of decades I don't know several thousand miles I can tell you that I never did any cross-country trips in it because the compression was so high but I had a lot of fun with it and uh, this one <clears throat> this is the FK7 this is the first of the ratio rockers on the angle line and the top of this lobe is about 30 thousandths shorter than that C35 cam right there which would be equivalent to uh, uh, angle 110 and this would be their ratio rocker version of an angle 110 and so I kind of had an idea I put the two cams together and I kind of looked to see where I was gonna have to grind and then you can finish finish it off just for finesse you can see where I took my magic marker and I, I put marks on the cam lobes to see where I needed to grind and the pattern seems to be that uh, it's you know it's on both sides of this one and then both sides of this one and both sides of this one so this is this is why we do this the heel of your and this these are H beam rods if you try to use uh, uh, stock rods um, you have to be real careful 
my favorite all-around engine. I've been thinking about this a lot. Something that gives reliable horsepower and is easy to assemble that you could have a lot of fun squirting around town or you could take it on a long trip. To me, that engine would be the 2 liter. You get, it's like a 78.4, sometimes they sell them as a 78.8 so you don't have to you know worry about shims and where you're gonna get higher compression from in our case in my case I want to all my engines to run on pump gas uh, that's available where I live so I want it uh, to be a little bit lower compression depends on what cam what carburetors what you have in mind what your plan is but uh, and I'm thinking I'm gonna replace this case with an aluminum one. I, I, I just don't want to risk this crankshaft and connecting rods and uh, so what I've chosen is I'm gonna I haven't ordered it yet. <laughs> I may be getting the cart in front of the horse here too. I think I'm gonna go with another aluminum bubble top case and the reason I'm doing this is when Volkswagen came out with the Type 4 engines and engine blocks, they didn't use the magnesium case alloy cases anymore. They went to aluminum. And Porsche uses aluminum. And the aluminum does run hotter, but it, it is stronger. And I figure that these newer aluminum cases, whatever brand you purchase, Hopefully you get a good one. Pick with a, a good line. Um, I ordered one of those bubble top cases just to experiment with back in the day when I was working and had money. And this has got the best oil pressure. It runs about 10-15 degrees warmer than an AS41 case. I've taken it on long trips, uh, three, 4,000 mile trips, and, and never had any issues with it at all. The other thing I like if you want to on the 2 liter you can run the stock valve heads and heater boxes with no issues. I screwed up a set of heads by running 40 by 35 valves and using the stock heater boxes. You should go change up to aftermarket heater boxes if you think that heat is something that you have to have and can't live without. So the other thing is that when you have an AS41 case that was engineered, designed, and built for a 1600 engine, number one, why do you think that it would be a good idea to take a stock block engine that's over, somewhat overbuilt for a 1600 that has a limited lifespan then you cut out all this reinforcing to clearance the inside of the case for a stroke or crank and then put it in more severe service duty with higher horsepower parts. This does not logically make sense to my brain. If you are just building a weekend warrior with limited miles and you know this going into it, that's fine. But be aware of the different signs of, um, you know, listen carefully to noises, watch your oil pressure, and catch it before you break something. Um, you can screw up a, a good crankshaft. And uh, I feel that the aluminum cases were made specifically for the stroker cranks. They were made to accept an 86 stroke crank and it was made that way they added extra material behind number three they filled it in they didn't do any welding they deep set it the the stud they made it out of a harder material it just to me i think that makes sense and i i proved to myself now there are some things 
quality control things that you need to look, observe. We've just been talking about your oil pump inlet and outlet holes. There's the number one main bearing. Um, sometimes the hole isn't centered on the oil slot and you need to take a burr and just I, I would grind into the case. I wouldn't mess around with the bearing. I would grind into the case itself and permanently move it over so that it's done. And if you change bearings or somebody else gets it, it's done. That's not something to even think about. Um, I, I, I will say that a, you know, <laughs> this is odd coming from somebody who's hard of hearing, but an aluminum case will sound different than a AS41 case. I think it has transmits noise like your lifter noise and um, it's not going to grow in the same proportions um, but I don't think you have the as many issues. I would still in all cases with air-cooled Volkswagen engines that are going to be used on the street for long-term use, I would use the stock style 8 millimeter head studs, the long ones that hold your heads on. These here. If you're building a high compression turbo toy, then you probably could go with the chromoly. The chromoly is not going to grow and you really have to watch your heads to make sure that you don't develop leaks and it would be a good idea periodically maybe once a year or something like that during your off season if you have one to maybe retorque the heads and and just sort of check them out um i've done this numerous times taking engines apart just to inspect them Usually I make a camshaft change. I want to try something else for a while. Um, I want to hone the cylinders, put rings in it. Uh, these cylinders, I'm thinking about getting new cylinders um, and reusing the old pistons. And I don't know if I... I just sort of throw this in there. I don't know why I do this to myself and you. No, I've oil these. I don't know if you'll see it here. Um, let's see, this would be the bottom. I notice a stain. I don't see it in this one. <coughs> Why not? This was number one. I guess I honed it out. There's a few scratches in there. But the main thing that was bugging me <coughs> is there was a stain in the bottom. Uh, I have Delorto carburetors and I don't know which ones it is but I got a set that have developed what they call the drip and with any of these uh, carburetors, dual carburetors and <coughs> if you don't run the correct fuel pressure if you uh, um, just throw a pump on there or I like to use electric pumps I'm just uh, I'm done with these newer uh, stock style pumps they just they vapor lock easy they don't uh, I'm not happy with them <laughs> just and it cleans up my engine compartment um, I had a fuel injected case that didn't have a pump location on it so I ended up putting electric pumps on all my cars and I'm very pleased with it um, the, <coughs> the only drawback that I can see is uh, your engine will start right up there is a benefit if you have your car in storage for a number of months and you go to start it and you have to crank it for a long time you, you may think that it's hard on your battery but it's <coughs> pumping <coughs> oil hopefully through your engine while you're waiting for that carburetor uh, float bowl to fill up with <coughs> fuel so <coughs> sorry about this cough I, it's getting worse I've talked to the doc about it and it's like I'm just 
I have health issues because I didn't take care of myself when I was younger. I worked around a lot of strong chemicals in the HVAC field, uh, big chillers with uh, outside cooling towers and a lot of, a lot of <coughs> bad stuff in there. <coughs> and I would get inside there and I'd scrub them, try to keep them clean, but didn't have the right can't wear a mask in there. I'd do it while it was running. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm paying the price for it now. So, yeah, just kind of showing you guys how I'm, how I'm fitting a cam. It is time consuming. If you got an easier way to do this, uh, I'd like to know how somebody else does it. I, you can't, I can, I can get this, uh, these two spots on a regular grinder, but I don't know, it takes a long time to file this by hand, and so I'm just sort of marking, checking, going back, and looking at it, and then I'll dress it with a, a file, make sure that I get, you know, kind of get it smoothed out. You don't have to worry about make, getting this thing weaker. It, they're pretty tough. And... Uh, Yeah, see this one right here by my thumb? That The heel of that one was hitting before. I think we're pretty close. So, even though it looks like it's pretty close, you want to have... Uh, Berg used to say 40 thousandths because at high RPM, these crankshafts will flex, and as they get older and you get a little bearing wear, connecting rod wear, Everything wears, everything moves, and it expands and contracts all the time. So you don't want it self-clearancing while it's running and, and rubbing into things. So it's better to leave yourself a little bit extra space uh, when you can. So yeah, you can see marks over here, and those will just wear off or come off. Magic marker won't hurt nothing. So... Uh, now this is, oh, this is cam gear. The one that was in here was a minus one, and this is a zero, and you can hear it. And you want to, you want to don't just check that in one spot. You want to go to other spots. I know you can hear that. I've, I've watched it, and then back and forth. But I've got to replace these cam bearings because these aren't the right ones. See, this is what my point was earlier. You know, you, you've got all this stuff in here. I don't think the factory would do that to 20 million engines if it wasn't absolutely necessary. That's a lot of material when you add it up. <clears throat> you know, so to take all that material out of it, I'd rather just, now that I've had an aluminum engine block and... You know, you're building a bigger engine, and another 20 pounds isn't going to kill you. It weighs a little more, and it's tougher, and it's made for that. There's more space. They make a dome bubble top for clearance. <clears throat> and uh, solid behind number three cylinder there. So, anyhow. Okay, enough. I got to keep working. If I keep making videos, I'm not working. But wait! There's more! I need a burrito. That's what I need. <laughs>